Yeah, first of all, I, uh, again, I want to echo again my thanks to, to the center for giving me this opportunity. The way I would like to organize my, my presentation is to take from what Emily did on the, uh, the core principles for the national strategic stat strategies. And I want to look at the issue of analysis of the context by looking at the issues of the, uh, the issue of internal shocks and threats and also the external shocks. Because for me, this is the basis upon which you will have a building blocks for you to develop the, uh, the strategy. I think a bit of overlapping in a sense that the, uh, what Dan did, I think I will talk a bit maybe from an African point of view, but also from a research point of view, the trajectory of the US assistance to, to Africa. And then the implication for this, for the, uh, the food, I mean the, uh, the national security architecture in Africa. And, and, and what are the implications for your own national strategy? But before I could, I start, I think I recommend to you this, this book. It's called Minding the Gap. Uh, it's, a, 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 it's African Conflict Management in the Time of Change. And it's a very good book because this is a book actually will help you to shape and then to understand better how do you deal with the, and I use a lot of material here in making my presentation. And also for the, uh, for, the, for the U.S. foreign policy towards Africa, I recommend to you, the, it is in the reading, uh, Kate re wrote a, uh, a paper on the friend, friends or foe, U.S. counterterrorism strategy in Africa. Because it's quite a bit, uh, a very a different way of looking at the whole, uh, whole strategy. I think it's quite candid in a sense of, of mapping and assessing the, the U.S. foreign policy. Now, so I will bother you a bit with, with a certain, uh, I hope it will work. So this is the way I want to start. But let me start with this one first, internal shocks. I want to reiterate what Paul Williams said about the, uh, the persistence of internal conflict. This one will continue to be your challenge. But although you may see the trend is, is declining over time, but when you see the share of Africa, in terms of conflict, and in terms of the year, uh, it's, it's quite an a, a, uh, increasing trend. But if you look at it also from the perspective of the population pressure, that, that line down, you could see clearly that the uh, population pressure will continue to pose a real challenge for you and for the, for the African countries. I think we did a study recently, and the, and the demographic pressure will continue to be a real challenge to, 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 to you. If you, if you look, another one is there's a very big issue about the issue of uh, poverty and conflict. And I think Dan mentioned it, the issue of deprivation rather than, 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 the, uh, than poverty. This map is showing how, how Africa, even the, in the, the reduction in the, uh, in the, uh, the, uh, the reduction in poverty over time, whether in the fragile or non-fragile countries, but still you see conflict persist. And it's something you need to keep in your mind that the, uh, it is not about issue of poverty, it's bigger than, 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 than poverty. I was involved, I want to bring this attention to you, the issue of international migration. It is something which has never been, 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 been discussed a lot. I, I, I was involved with WFP and I went to, uh, to in, in, in Italy, I was in Rome, I went to Lampedusa. And you, you, you could see clearly the failure of our public policies, whereby you have these youth coming in massive, some dying on the way to, to, to Europe. And it is not a European problem, it is, it is an African problem, a reflection of a failure of our public policies. You, you see most of them, Africa is having a very big, big share in terms of international migrants, but as well as these are young ones coming from, from our countries. And I think the whole debate is that how to shift this issue of international migration. It will continue to create a problem internally, but equally externally also. You might have seen also the debate about the issue of uh, migrant becoming a real debate in, in, in political uh, debate or discourse in the, whether in the US and Europe is becoming a big issue. And you have the a new liberal, new liberal uh, I mean, the, the, the right wing, Parties are coming up now with a very quiet, uh, uh, a very antagonistic attitude towards migration. So it is an African problem. And I see we, what we did to put in the context the whole of the food security. 
our research, what we found, there's a very clear link between food security and conflict. It has been found that the conflict affecting food security, but it is very clear case now from this that actual food security affects the, the intensity and the likelihood of conflict. But food security as well is one of the determinants for the international migration. Uh, also, there's a very clear case also international migration affecting the arms conflict. So food security and international migration, very important factors you need to look at. We look even about the impact of, there's a very clear case between the link between natural disasters and then the, the armed conflict. So the point I want to make here is that international migration will continue to be a big challenge for you. Don't see this is something for others to, to solve it. It is an African problem. But it's also exposing the failure of our public policies in seeing these young ones crossing and dying on the way to, to Europe. Now, the other thing that we need to, to look at, although we discuss about the issue of arms conflict, I mean the, the coup details, the coup details will persist, and we need to be, to be, to be aware about it. And the security sector is the one going to take the, the, the whole burden. The good news is that from the, uh, after, after the post-Cold post War, we are seeing a very a decline in autocratic system in Africa. But as well, also, we are seeing also a democratic uh, uh, system in, in Africa, improve, I mean, in, improving over time. But still, coup d'etats will continue to be a real threat, your threat to, and you are going to deal with it. So they are not that there, and, and we need to deal with them. One thing I want to highlight here also is the issue of stability and economic growth. This one is African, African, Development, uh, African Development Bank. These are very interesting work between the link between stability and economic growth. If you look here, some of these countries, these are the countries well endowed with natural resources, yet very unstable. They have a very high level of economic growth, but unsustainable, a bubble. That be careful also, these natural resources becoming a curse depending the way you, you handle them. One of the things I feel also internally going to face us is the issues of institutions. Here is the, is the World Bank, they use what is called CPIA. This is the assess the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the institutions and the quality of policies in each country. And you could see clearly Africa, whether in the fragile or non-fragile uh, 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 countries or outside uh, Africa, is a very low level of, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, weak institutions will persist and will pose a real challenge to you. But even when you come here, I think the uh, public management and institutions, the one in, in, in blue, is lower when you use at different indicators in terms of which institutions are actually very weak. Now, Again, climate change is an issue that we need to keep ourselves aware about. And many studies, as I mentioned earlier, will continue to, to pose a real challenge for you. Something which sometimes is not, is not discussed is the issues of commodity prices. Most of our, our economies were depending on these commodity prices, uh, commodities in our economy. A very drastic in last, I mean in 2004, a very clear decline in these uh, commodity prices. And this is going to affect each and, and, and every country in Africa. And it has been shown by the World Bank how a country that is depending on oil export, almost its growth or the, its economy shrunk by almost 1%, which is a very big thing that we may need. So, so, so the, this, this, this behavior of commodity prices will continue and will be a big challenge to, 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 to us. Inequality. We have seen a very clear pattern of inequality in the developed economies. But it is, it is a phenomenon that on, not only in developing economies, but also in the developing economies like Africa. And the way inequality is creating, becoming a security problem, even international or globally. And this one is showing to you how few, few of us are actually owning almost half of our wealth we have. These are work done by the, by the uh, Oxfam. So inequality itself, it is not about economic growth, but inequality itself will, will pose a real threat to, to, to our security. 
Now, I, because Dan mentioned, discussed this thing, and I don't want to, the issue of the, uh, the US uh, foreign policy, but I wanted to take from what Kate uh, highlighted, the militarization of US foreign policy. I just want to underline one point. US is pursuing its, its security interests, full stop. It is you how you make best use of it. And I think it is very important we take it in that, in that context. And I want to, to, to highlight these things in the sense that the, uh, the, uh, the, the trajectory of, of the US foreign policy in Africa, I think Dan mentioned it very well, the Cold War period, it was about fighting communism. And there were no a lot of things attached in relation to US pillars of foreign, uh, foreign policy in terms of democracy, human rights, and all these things. The post-Cold War period, Africa was not in the, in the strategic focus of US. It was at the periphery of the focus. It is only came back in the post-9-11. And in actual fact, there are a lot of debate about to what level the, the, the aid itself shifted from, from the, the developmental aid to the military aid. Some researchers are saying, in actual fact, the, 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 the aid to Africa, which was managed by Pentagon, increased, I think, from, uh, I'm not seeing it here, from 3 to 22 percent. And the, and, the, and the USID assistant declined from 65 to 40 percent. Kate is saying, actually, over time, this thing has not changed. It's almost about one third of the year. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I, think, I think two thirds of the year. But the fact of the matter, US is changing its policies towards Africa based on its interests. And it is it depending on the way uh, that, that Africa will be able to engage with, uh, with, 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 with US. And I think it's, it's very important also to see even AFRICOM. There are a lot of debate to what level why Africans, they refuse AFRICOM. Uh, and, 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 and I think Dan mentioned, mentioned this issue of AFRICOM. So, so the trajectory of the U.S. foreign policy to Africa is guided by its interests. And, and, and that's the, the point I just want to highlight. I think Dan mentioned it also. This is also how some, some of the researchers, although some sources, we need to cross-check this one, how the, uh, how the, uh, the, uh, the aid, the, the military aid increased over time in comparison to the development aid to Africa. Uh, which may not be, you may need to, to look at this, but also that these different sources of the, uh, I think you have the sources, uh, I put it there. Now, what are the implications of this one to Africa? So you have all these changes, and U.S. will continue to be a very important friend to Africa. The perception there is very clear and a strategic friend to Africa. It depends the way we, and that's why we put it here as one of the shock. Because the change in US, US, US foreign policy <laughs> will be just like any other shock or threat to you because if you are depending on, on, on the US. Now, what are the implications of this one? One thing I feel that we may need to deal with is this myth of terrorism. And I want to, I took it from a statement that the uh, Africa is incubator of terrorists because of its poor, unhealthy, uneducated population with no face in future. This is a statement that came from a very senior um, uh, uh, official in the, in the US government. And I think one of the things we need to debate is, is, is this narrative is very important for us. It's not about being poor, it's becoming a problem. But it is, it is, it is, it is, it is about the weak institutions that we are having. So, and this help, this is the myth that we need to rebang and make sure that we get the right narrative about, the, about, 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 uh, about us. Then let us look to the structure, architecture that we have in, 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 in Africa. All this architecture, if you look at them in Africa, especially at the level of regional, at the level of the continent, poorly coordinated, overlapping, guided by specific national interests, and sometimes there's also a debate whether should you focus on African architecture at the, nation, at the continent level or you focus at the regional level. Because the economic commissions, re, sub-regional economic commissions are becoming, playing a very important role in, in driving the, uh, 
the security sector uh, uh, architecture? Or should you look at the, at the national level? Because these are things that are, are actually affecting us. So let me conclude by highlighting what are the implications of these, all these things, the, 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 the internal shocks, the external shocks, the shifting of U.S. foreign policy to your national security. And this is what I want to provide, uh, providing the context with which you can be able to deal with your national security. So let me stop here and thank you.